I'm about to ask you a question and I want you to answer it truthfully. Is there anything more terrifying than spending a bunch of money on a car only to find out that it is plain horrible? Like you don't even wanna drive it because it's so unreliable, it's so underpowered, it's unsafe, and it's just super low quality. Well, that does not sound ideal. And lucky for you, I'm about to save you that heartbreak because buyer's remorse is a real thing. So in this video, I'm gonna go through some of the absolutely worst cars over the last 20 years that you should never, ever, ever buy. And if you're new here, I'm Brad Danger. This is Ideal. Please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. And I can already hear some of you calling the trigger police. Buckle up and let's go. Okay, we are starting off with a Tesla. Yes, the Model X. Yes, because despite having a massive amount of hype around it, you have to remember that Tesla is still a relatively new automaker. And as all new companies are bound to do at some point, they make mistakes. You see, back in 2012, the prototype of the Model X was unveiled in Hawthorne, California. And just a few short years later, in September 2015, the first deliveries of the Model X were rolling off the assembly line. And after just 12 months in production, the Model X was ranked seventh among the best-selling plug-in cars in the world. World. And yet, the 2016 Model X is definitely one of those mistakes that if you buy, you probably, okay, you'll have buyer's remorse. And I think we can all agree, those Falcon doors are amazing, but they also had some major problems with those things. And not only were they unreliable, they'd get stuck, but the vehicle overall was pretty unreliable as well. Also, the windshield? Yeah, at night, it could give drivers double vision. And it's a phenomenon that's known as ghosting. And yeah, that's a little bit scarier than your Tinder match not texting you back, I'd say. And again, we're talking about the first year of the Model X because it seems like Tesla has ironed out most of those kinks. And while you probably didn't think you'd see a Tesla on this list, okay, who are we kidding? You probably knew that there would be a Tesla on this list, but it is for the first year model. And as we know, buying a first year model is not the best idea. Just like buying any year of this second car on this list. Because when you name a car after a black market in internet browser, you can't really expect much quality. Okay, so maybe Pontiac didn't name it for that reason, but this car still sucks, especially for the first few model years from 2006 until 2009. These were the worst of a couple lemons Pontiac left behind before disappearing into the midst of GM's bankruptcy. The torrent, yes, the torrent was riddled with problems in the drivetrain, fuel system, and power equipment from 06 to 08. And sure, it does share most of its parts with the Chevy Equinox. So repairs, fortunately, aren't gonna cost you a fortune. But let's just say those little amounts are gonna continue to add up over time as you're running to the mechanic pretty much every other week. And this next vehicle that will 100% give you buyer's remorse, not only is a lot more classy than that Pontiac, but it's also a lot more expensive. And you probably won't be happy with what you get for the money. And you probably wouldn't expect to see a Jaguar on the list of horrible cars because usually Jaguars, well, sometimes are pretty solid. And sure, they aren't the cream of the crop in the luxury sector, but they're still usually usually pretty well made and fun to drive. But what lands the 2008 X-Type on this list is the major problems it has with its front wheel drive. Plus add in the junkyard quality material that's used for its interior and the fact it doesn't get all that great gas mileage. Plus let's not forget the unreasonably high price tag. This thing is less than ideal. New, it retailed for roughly $36,000, which yes, isn't ridiculously high, but do you really wanna pay that? Just so you can go to the gas pump like every five minutes or until your front axle falls off, whichever happens first, yeah. I didn't think so. And while you've probably only seen old people and their parents drive the X-Type, this next vehicle is very popular among the young folk. And those are people that bought this vehicle never having read a review. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please smash that like button so not only the YouTube algorithm knows it, but we do too here. So we can make you more like it. Because as much as we love BMW and acknowledge that any car bearing a BMW badge is going to give you a solid level of reliability, something has got to be done about their sub-brand Mini. Specifically specifically the 2015 Countryman. Yes, this thing. Yes, the transmission on this model year is more likely to break than your lazy coworker around noon. And this problem is certainly not a one-off by many. You see, older Countrymans from 07 to 11 had similar transmission issues. And while it felt unnecessary to put the Mini Cooper on this list, those have countless problems with the exhaust, clutch, turbocharger, and pretty much any other component that you can think of. So while looking at reliability scores, any sensible person is going to steer clear of the Mini badge. But people usually have something 
or a few things good to say about this next brand. But what you may overlook is the serious problems that they've had with reliability in the past. Yes, we're talking about an Audi, not an innie, which would be a belly button, because Audis used to be referred to as sinkholes of the service problems. However, it sort of seems like they've gotten their act together in the last few years. And one of my personal favorite supercars of all time is the Audi R8 second gen. And if you like to live your life in pain and misery, well then look no further than the Audi A4 from 2009 and 2010. The A4 has been an oil chugger throughout its entire lifespan. And that problem starts up right around 60,000 miles in the 09 and 010 models and will probably cost you around 6,000 bucks to repair. And another issue that you may be unfortunate enough to experience is catastrophic engine failure, which is not only extremely costly, but really dangerous. But luckily, Audi as a brand, the reliability ratings have been climbing steadily since 2010. But I'd really think twice or maybe even three times about getting a 2010 Audi A4 or older. They just aren't that great, which is a lot like this next vehicle. It is a one trick pony. And if your main goal of buying a vehicle is to take it off road and explore the mountains, then the Jeep Compass might be a decent purchase. However, in pretty much every other way imaginable, it is complete garbage. First of all, either of the four bangers offered in the 15 model are somehow underpowered yet piercingly loud. Yeah, you're gonna wanna buy your neighbors some noise canceling headphones if you buy one. And heck, if you're gonna shatter someone's eardrums, at least give me some power with it, right? And the Compass isn't great on handling at all. And like all Jeeps, has pretty poor fuel economy. Exterior and interior design on the Compass are certainly nothing to write home about. And the 15 model got an especially bad reliability rating. And if you wanna go off road and you absolutely need a Jeep, get a Wrangler. Yeah, I just bought my fiance one and it was easily one of the best purchases ever. And if you wanna wear some ideal swag, go snag some up here. Because drivers of this next vehicle would never consider taking it off-road, unless you were Brad Danger. And that's because it's supposedly an elite luxury sedan. And did you notice that I said, supposedly? Yeah, at this point, Maserati is pretty much the laughing stock of the luxury car world. Since 16, they've ranked dead last in reliability scores across 40 different brands. And that's probably because they've changed ownership at least six times in their history. And no one knows what the hell to do with them. The Ghibli, <laughs> is perhaps the worst of all the awful cars they've ever put out. And that's saying a lot. The interior of the Ghibli is extremely low quality for a car that costs $80,000. Your friends riding shotgun will probably think it looks more like an entry level Chrysler with all its plastic buttons and dials. Plus that roof line, ugh, slopes so hard that you'll be craning your neck even as you're driving. And no, Maserati is not gonna cover your chiropractic bills. And the new 2020 Ghibli lacks a ton of the tech and safety features that brands like BMW, Audi, and Mercedes have been offering for years. Like, you know, a 360 camera, lane departure warning, and forward collision braking. If you want any of these features, you're gonna have to buy a premium package, which I think is just absolutely ridiculous when it's an $80,000 car. And that $80,000 is gonna just go poof when you drive it off the lot. Because like any expensive car that's incredibly unreliable, the Ghibli depreciates like crazy. And yes, there's more that I could say about the Ghibli, but we just don't have enough time. So I'll just sum it up by just don't buy one ever. And now that I'm done with my Maserati rant, let's move on to a Japanese SUV from a brand that's typically pretty reliable, but they made a blunder with this one. And it is just straight up not choice. Did I use that right? You see, Nissans in general have performed far better than the industry average in reliability scores. But one vehicle that's definitely hurting their overall score is the Pathfinder, specifically the model years 2013 and 2014. Yes, the 13 Pathfinder had nine separate recalls for just about everything you could imagine. That's as much as cats have lives. The 2014 model is notorious for a defective CVT control valve that causes it to shudder violently when accelerating. Sounds like fun. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it doesn't sound pleasant at all. And here's an idea. Find a path that leads you as far as possible from the Nissan Pathfinder. But the Pathfinder isn't the only big SUV on this list, giving owners headaches if you still have a muscle between the ears. This next one is pretty bad too, except it was bad for a whole eight years. GMC for this vehicle should stand for guaranteed mechanic call because that's what you're gonna get when you buy one of the 
ridiculously unreliable rides. It's hard to find any GMC models that haven't ended up on one of the most unreliable lists somewhere. But the Acadia, oh boy, it just might be their worst offering to date. Any Acadia produced from 2007 to 14 is gonna come with a whole mess of transmission issues, drivetrain problems, and malfunctions in the climate control system. That means if you take your Acadia up to the cold Acadian regions of Maine and the Canadas, you might just end up freezing to death. And no thank you. Let's talk about the Acadia's exterior styling for a second. It's pretty enough to fool you into thinking it's a decent SUV, but not much more than that. And whew, are you guys ready for this next vehicle? Yeah, me too. We're talking about the PT Cruiser, baby. And this is probably what all my ex-girlfriends say about me. Fugly and unreliable. But I just brush it off and I think that they're talking about the PT Cruiser. Because if you went and looked at one of these suckers for sale and you didn't just take one look at this super weird body shape and walk away, you already made your first mistake. But if you were to actually get behind the wheel of one of these strange machines, well, I would hope that since you're subscribed to Ideal, you'd find out that it is going to have a ton of problems and it just is not fun to drive. They're all plagued with electrical issues, but the heartbeat of this Plymouth, Pontiac, Chrysler, whatever the PT Cruiser actually is, the engine is very unreliable. And not if, but when it breaks, it is not worth fixing. Heck, this thing is totaled when it runs out of gas. It is that bad. Okay, enough about the PT Cruiser, because I do want to talk about an honorable mention real quick. And I'm going to quickly list off some of the top trucks on the used market to avoid at all costs. The Ram 1500 has been a solid truck throughout most of its lifespan, but do not buy under any circumstances a 14 or 15 model. For some reason, the reliability scores for those years absolutely tanked due to the problems with the brake systems and power components. The 08 GMC Canyon. Although not a horrible looking truck, that was an especially weak year for the compact pickup. Its powertrain in every trim level was underpowered, with the base four cylinder offering just 185 horsepower, and the interior quality is more than subpar, but you won't have to pay a lot to get into one. Just avoid an 08. And another truck that's pretty underwhelming in almost every way is the 07 Chevy Colorado. This pickup came out right around the same time as the gas crisis, and so, Chevy being Chevy wanted to offer a fuel efficient option to the larger Silverado. The result was a wimpy pickup with a weak engine, poor towing capability, zero off-road prowess, and an uncomfortable interior. And if you're looking for a little bit more power, which who isn't, be wary of the Chevy Silverado 2500 HD from the 15 and 16 model years. These trucks have serious suspension problems, cabin noises, and leaks. And if I had to ask you, what is the most buyer remorse vehicle out there in the world? Let us know down below. Also, if you're new here, I'm Brad Danger. This is Ideal. Please subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and as always, keep living the ideal lifestyle.